Good morning and welcome to the FX Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Friday the 10th of May 2019. My name is Darren Sindon and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. OK, let's kick off as ever with a look at the overnight changes and price moves we should be aware of. Uh, a relatively quiet session uh, overnight again on the uh, foreign exchanges and perhaps surprisingly so given that what the uh, macro background is at the moment and things that are developing in the US. Uh, we saw uh, some movements though of note and some items worth pointing out. First of all, the Australian dollar against the US dollar, the Aussie falling back below 70 and and staying there overnight uh, will be very interesting to see if we can rebound back above that uh, round number. So let's watch the weekly close there. If we stay below there uh, on the close tonight, I think then that we're probably set uh, to weaken further. That will be my read uh, on uh, on events there. Uh, elsewhere, we saw the US dollar make further modest gains against the Chinese yuan. The dollar up by 0.08% against the Chinese cap currency but not really adding significantly uh, to the gains that it's made over the last week and indeed the last month. The dollar did do a bit better however against near neighbour the Mexican peso taking 0.22% off of the Mexican currency to trade at 1926.92 shortly before uh, we recorded the video. Dollar index for its part broadly unchanged on the session uh, up modestly by 0.03%. Uh, the dollar lost ground uh, to the Indian rupee falling by 0.25% uh, but it gained elsewhere in the emerging markets adding 0.15% against the South African Rand. I uh, just wanted to flag that we've seen a modest pickup overnight in the prices of both Bitcoin and Ether uh, and that adds to weekly gains for both of the cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin's up an impressive 11.2% now over the last seven days. OK then, what's on the calendar? Events that may move the markets today. Uh, a pretty busy calendar. Uh, we've already had a uh, release from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Their monetary policy statement was out earlier at, uh, at uh, 1.30 GMT this morning. Uh, to come at 6am GMT, we'll have trade balance data out of Germany uh, for March. And then at 7.30 GMT, 8.30 London time, we shall have the first of the day central banker speeches. And this from ECB member Lauten Schlauger. At 8.30 GMT, we're back in London uh, for a series of releases including gross domestic product for Q1 2019, manufacturing uh, and industrial production for the uh, month of March, and of course uh, a read on GDP for the month of March as well. And then we pause until 12.30 GMT. We cross over the Atlantic for the second of the day's central banker speeches, this from the Federal Reserve's Brainard. And then at the same time, we've got a uh, series of US data being released, consumer price index, both inclusive and exclusive of uh, food and energy, and uh, that's for the month of April. So a good chance to have a look at the state of play as far as US inflation is concerned. Remember, low inflation uh, is one of the Fed's core risks, and it's one of the reasons they say that they paused on tightening and have considered perhaps uh, cutting US rates during 2019-2020. At the same time, across the border in Canada, we'll have a chance to look at the unemployment situation there with the release of the unemployment rate, average hourly wages and the net change in employment and participation rates for the month of April. Then at 13.05, we're back in the US for a speech by the Fed's Bostick. And then at 14.30, we hop back over the Atlantic to Europe uh, where the ECB's Benoit Coeur will be speaking. Finally, at 1800, we'll see the release of the US a monthly budget statement, a chance to look at the finances of the US federal government for the month of April. OK, breaking news and comment then that's caught my eye overnight. First of all, the US has hiked tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports. Uh, trade talks are set to continue today between uh, China and the US, but a deal in this session seems increasingly unlikely given the distance between the two parties uh, and sources close to the negotiations still it could take a month. Uh, to undo or sort out the proposed Chinese uh, changes to a deal that had previously been uh, agreed. An advisor to China's central bank has said that the increased US tariffs could knock as much as 0.3% off of Chinese GDP per annum. So uh, an instantaneous knock-on effect according to a PBOC advisor there from those increased tariffs. So you can see why uh, the Chinese might be incentivized to try and conclude a deal. Meanwhile, the Italian Minister for the Economy, Giovanni Tria, has called for an end to the EU fiscal compact, which he says creates deflation. The fiscal compact are the set of rules uh, that determine how much of uh, 
uh, of a budget deficit uh, a government can run. And you remember that uh, uh, the Italians uh, have been keen to expand their deficit to uh, try and, uh, shall we say, reflate their economy. Uh, Brussels has prevented them from doing that. And so it's those rules that uh, Giovanni Tria would like to do away with. And finally, low FX volatility has reduced FX hedging by US companies, a report from Reuters finds, that despite some $20 billion plus of negative FX headwinds on US corporates' Q4 2018 earnings. So maybe if they'd hedged a bit better, uh, those uh, US companies could have earned themselves another $20 billion. Food for thought there, indeed. Right, time for food for thought and something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. And why not think about this? A New York Federal Reserve model has said that there is a 27% chance of a US recession uh, in April 2020, or by April 2020. Uh, that assumption was based on spreads between the 3-month and 10-year US Treasury bond yields. The same model showed us a 35 to 40% chance uh, of a recession back in 2007, just ahead of uh, the global financial crisis and the Great Recession that followed. Uh, this according to reports from Yahoo Finance. And the chart to the right hand side, a bit uh, compact, but it shows uh, the uh, spreads between uh, the 10 year and three month treasury bonds uh, and the uh, probabilities of a recession uh, that this model has predicted. You can see the previous uh, sharp rise in predictions here that led us into the uh, recession of 2008 2009. And as you can see, the probabilities are ticking up once more. Now, no, there's no guarantee, of course, that uh, we will see a US recession, and in fact, the economy is growing. Uh, quite nicely still, but of course we're 11 stroke 12 years into a bull market and a period of expansionary growth in the US that may not continue forever. So this is an indicator perhaps worth paying attention to. Okay, it's risk warning time. Please do take a moment to read this risk warning as uh, trading CFDs and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business. If you're unsure about those risks or the suitability of leveraged products for you, then please do contact your Pepperstone account representative. And as I say, do take the time to read this risk warning thoroughly. Thank you for your time today.